cold but straightforward Christmas period. But the weather today, it has come out with a vengeance to make it a difficult day on the roads. Just look at the water on the roads here. I don't know if that is showing it as well as it could do. video I'm going to look at the three things that every car dealer should have to hand at any one time. If you don't have any of these three things when a customer comes to look at a car you could find yourself in trouble. Let's have a look what they are. The very first thing you're gonna need is a good jump pack. Now get a really good quality one because you may be jumping commercial vehicles or vehicles that need a lot of power to get them going. So a cheapy might not do you any favors. And if you're gonna get a jump pack, get yourself a set of good jump leads, because I've been in a situation where I've had a good jump pack, but I still haven't had enough juice to get the vehicle going. Let's have a look, we've got a commercial vehicle here. The battery is dead. If a customer was coming to look at it, because it's been sitting around over the Christmas period, the battery has died on me. It's the curse of the car dealer. So make sure you have a good jump pack. Now I've got this off the snap-on, guys. Let's pop this on. I'm trying to do it with one hand. These grips are really strong. Let's have a look. Get that one on there. There we go. I've got it connected up and we've sprung into life. Let's jump in. There we go, got it going. So it's really essential as a car dealer. So there's times when these batteries die on us as car dealers and we need to make sure we've got a means of getting it going, haven't we? It happens a lot over things like holiday periods where cars and vehicles have been sitting around and have the potential to go flat, doesn't it? Now some people will have a lot of trickle chargers. Probably not worth it with cheap commercials to have that sort of facility in place. So a good jump pack is a lifesaver to the car dealer. Give it a spin for 20 minutes, get the battery charged back up properly and we're good to go for the customer. Okay, so secondly, what you're gonna need is a decent diagnostic kit. Now, this will save you a lot of time and hassle and possibly money as well because when you've just sold a car, if someone drives off and a fault code comes on, you do not wanna to have to then say, take a seat in the waiting room, drive to your nearest mechanics, try and jump the queue to get them to diagnose the fault and then go back and say, well, this is the issue. Especially if there wasn't an issue, it was just being, for instance, that flat battery and it had chucked up a couple of codes because it had been, it, because the battery had discharged at some point. And it happens quite often. We've probably seen that over the last couple of my videos that discharged batteries cause us no end of dramas. It's also handy should you do your own servicing because we have our own ramps and we often service our own cars as well. So we need to be able to reset service history lights once we've done that service on the vehicle. Um, it's also good practice to have it because the last thing you want to do is the customer's 20 minutes away from you, he's on his way to come down, and all of a sudden one of the guys who's putting the car out says, Chris, a fault code has come onto the vehicle. We can jump on that car, we can diagnose the fault code nice and quick and see if we need to postpone the customer whilst we get it sorted, take the vehicle off the market whilst we get it sorted, or whether it's just nothing really and we can just reset that code and go again, or even take it for the test drive. So it's always good to have these. And as well, if you're doing commercials, you might want to do force regens. They're a pain. 
on diesel vehicles, DPFs, because they're forever coming on, especially with short journeys. Now, we've also got the green box in the corner, and that is a carbon clean machine. Now, you don't need to do that. You don't need one of those. You can do a false regen without one of those. It's just good practice to do both at the same time. So we have that, so we can do, we have this, sorry, so we can do forced regens as well. So it's worth its weight in gold. It saved me a lot of time and hassle over the years to always invest in a proper diagnostic kit. You don't need to be a mechanic. You can simply get the fault codes and Google them and give yourself a good understanding or pick up the phone and speak to your mechanic and then get a good understanding on how long it's gonna to take to sort that fault out. So get yourself and invest in a good bit of diagnostic equipment. You'll thank me later. And finally, really short video for you today, but really essential for you to have is some spare fuel, some coolant, and some oil as well, isn't it? Because there's nothing worse than a customer coming along and one of the lads or yourself haven't checked the fluids and they need a slight top up, even some screen wash as well. Make sure you've got some screen wash there. So always have access to some fluids. Again, running out of petrol. It's curse of the car dealer. You don't know two people have been out on a test drive already. The car's come back, it had a bit of fuel in it, but now you need some more. It's a little bit embarrassing to run past a petrol station with your customer whilst on a test drive. And even more embarrassing, should you run out of fuel, what a nightmare should that happen, eh? Can you imagine that? Driving down the road, you might even be a new driver, a first time driver, you get to a junction, run out of fuel you're gonna look a complete idiot, or even worse, you can't get the car started simply because it's got no fuel before you set off on that test drive. So the three things you really should have, get yourself a good jump pack and some jump leads. So that's your first bit. You can start the vehicle every time. Second, get yourself a good diagnostic kit so you can do things like diagnosing the fault codes without having to go to the local garage. And you can also reset service lights if you've done a service yourself, a self-service yourself. You now we've got the ramps here. Very often we do a service just to keep the cost down. So it's worthwhile having that so we can do a proper reset of the service history. And then finally, make sure you've got your fluids, make sure you've got some diesel, some unleaded, make sure you've got access to some coolant, some oil and some screen wash because you wanna be able to make sure you can top up the fluids for your customer, should that happen. Hope you found these three tips useful. I know they seem simple, but you'll be surprised how many people who start in this game don't have those to hand. So that's just a short look at what's happening in a day in the life flipping cars on a bank holiday Monday in between the Christmas period. I've had to travel all the way back up to Surrey Hall. I've come along, I've filmed a YouTube video for you. I've jumped on about 40 different emails. I've got some logistics that have been planned prior to Christmas happening tomorrow. So I'm gonna follow up with all the drivers and make sure they're all set to go. So we don't have any more missed or late deliveries. It's the bane of my life. The weather on the way up today, I am praying we do not have tomorrow because that will affect more deliveries. And they are one of the hardest things we do here within this business. So I hope you enjoy these insights in what we do on a daily basis here within Flipping Cars. So do let me know if you think I've missed something off that list as well. Do you think there should be something else that every car dealer should have prior to setting themselves up or to make sure their operations run smoothly when handing their cars over to their customers. Do tell me in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, why not subscribe, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Speak to you soon.